And uh, so welcome you by Facebook this morning. I'm glad to have you with us in church today. And, uh, um, I got a little item of business I need to just kind of throw at you. It's not one of those things that's mandatory. I just ask you. It cost us a thousand dollars this week to get our green cleaned out outside because we've been having Lake Woodhaven out the back. <laughs> and uh, so it's been bad, but uh, it's all cleaned out now. It's, it's flowing. If you have anything extra you'd like to help us with in your offerings or whatever to help defray the cost, um, I would appreciate it. I know God will bless you for it. Uh, but I know all of us, you know, we're on our fixed incomes and all that stuff, so I'm not putting any pressure on anybody, but if you can help us, uh, God bless you for what you might do here. Um, we have a couple things happen. Our train's backed up. Somebody wiped out our mailbox this week, uh, but I got that back up, so it's you know still good. So, um, But God's been providing for us yes, yes. year after year after year, and uh, we were able to send uh, Pastor Moses um, his thousand dollars this this week, and uh, so we're grateful for that. Uh, winter time's coming. We don't know what our bills are going to be, but we're going to trust God to take care of us. Amen. Amen. Will you believe with me that God's going to meet our yes. needs? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Let's get busy here. Good morning, Sister Lois. We love you. She's all the way down in Florida, so most of you think I'm waving. I'm waving at Facebook. So. Amen. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm looking forward to that Thank day. Jesus. Amen. Yes. <laughs> We've done with all the cares, trials, troubles of this life. But you know what? While we're here, we must occupy till he comes. Amen. Do what he's asked us to do in a world that needs us. You may not think the world needs us, but it needs us. Yes. It needs our prayers. It needs our light. And I pray that we will be that light and that witness in a world that's full of darkness. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, I've always liked this song, and uh, it always lets me do something that I like to do is just give praise and honor and glory yes. to our Lord. Amen. Yes. Father, we love. We praise you, we adore you, glorify thy name in all the earth. Oh, we glorify thy name. pray for me as I do this one. Um, I haven't done this one for a long, long time, and uh, it's a little bit difficult one for me to do, but uh, uh, when I was looking through my book and I saw it and I started practicing it, I said, well, Lord, I said, I just feel like maybe this is for someone today, if not for all of us. I know it's for me. So I said, you just pray for me as I sing it. And Sister Lois, I love you. She always notices. <laughs> called Through the Fire. So many times I've questioned, 
certain circumstances of things I could not understand. Many times, trials and weakness blurs my vision, and my frustration gets so out of hand. It's then that I'm reminded I've never been forsaken. I never had to stand the test alone. As I look at all the victory, the spirit rises up in me. And through the fire, my weakness is made strong. things got so easy and you got in the battle of your life. The enemy of your soul is in the business of trying to destroy us, get rid of us, stop us any way he possibly can. But greater, come on, say it with me, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And so, victory is ours even sometimes yes. if we're not living in it. Praise the Lord because Jesus won the battle for us. The battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. That's right. I just have to give him all of that. I, uh, I sang this last week, but I just felt like I wanted to do it again. And uh, so, those of you that weren't here, you'll hear it the first time. And those of you that were here, you'll hear it the second time. Praise the Lord. But it's a... Uh, it's a song that grabbed my attention, grabbed my heart. I, one day I was driving home uh, from church and it was just on my uh, radio. And I was like, I gotta find that song. And so I did. The only problem is that I wasn't real crazy about how the words went. 
So I changed them. And I've done that in the past on other songs. I try to make the song the best I can to fit me. And uh, I hope I haven't done violence to the, uh, I forget the guy's name that wrote the song. But, uh, huh? David Crowder. David Crowder. Anybody know who David Crowder is? Yeah. yeah. Years ago, I remember years ago as a Christian, there was a certain mold that everybody thought you ought to fit into, you know. So, you know, as I talked to you about a little bit last week, you know, I got the suits with the vest and then the fob and the little watch hanging out and the little thing in your pocket and with the wingtip shoes. And I thought, that's what a Christian is supposed to look like. Well, I, I was looking up this song and I seen a picture of David Crowder and I went, phew. Man, he wouldn't have made it back then. You know what? It's not what's on the outside that matters so much, but it's what's on the inside. And I think sometimes we judge too harshly people that love Jesus. Now, I don't agree with a lot of things that go on in our Christian world these days, but there's some things that just needed to go by the wayside. Some things that we were, you know, it's kind of like, don't eat devil's food cake. Come on. I like devil's food cake. You know, just call it angel food cake if that makes you feel better. You know, deviled eggs, just call them angel eggs. You can call them whatever you want to. They taste good. You know. But we used to just strain in the net, so to speak, and follow, swallow a camel, basically. We just didn't let things go that we needed to let go. Jesus loves you from the inside out. Now, if he starts to change you on the outside, that's his business. And if you feel like he needs to do that, then let him do it. But if you feel like comfortable where you're at and what you're doing and you love Jesus, I just tell you, just do what you do and try to shine your best for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you can, under, you can see right now that this pastor has some changing that's going on in me over time. Because, you know, you, you have to learn that God can use anybody. He really can. I used to say, and I still do from time to time, if God can use a chicken and a donkey, he certainly can use me. Right? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So you pray for me as I do this song. Ah! Uh -huh. 
to his knees. Oh Lord, I failed you for that time or two, but you've always picked me up and brought me back to given you to use it for his glory amen and uh but it's good to be in the house of the lord i uh, you know i do feel like i felt like the lord had given me something actually happened a few weeks ago and uh just thought you know wasn't sure at that particular time what or where god was going to take me with it really when it happened i wasn't sure about that either but I'm going to try to share that with us this morning and pray that uh, we'll receive from the Lord. Amen. And Amen. hear from Him. Father, we love you today. And we thank you for your love and your goodness and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for those that have come here today, Lord, and just taken the time to be here, Lord. And those that by Facebook that are joining us as well, Lord, they, they made an effort, Lord. And because of that, Lord, I believe they're saying, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty for more of God. Lord, I pray that you just illuminate us today with your presence and your word and open up our eyes and open up our ears to hear your voice this morning, Lord. We've already feel you here. We've already sensed your presence, God, and we want to give you all that glory and praise. I pray, Father, and thank you, Lord, for your spirit and your anointing that comes, that breaks the yoke and sets the captives free, Lord. I pray, God, and I thank you, Lord, for my pastor, Lord, and his wife, Barb, Lord, and Lord, I was thinking just a moment ago, just how grateful I am for him in my life, and to this church, and to this church family. And Lord, I know he doesn't try to get any accolades, Lord. He's not looking for that. But I was thinking, Lord, it's been almost 31, 32 years, Lord, that you allowed me to be here, Lord. And I want to give you all that praise and glory. And thank you for just... Lord, all that you've let happen in this church over the years, Lord, men and women that have served and labored, Lord, men and women like Brother Wiley and Sister Wiley and others, God, that have given their lives for you, Lord, and service, Lord, and we just want to give you all that glory and all that praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hallelujah. I, uh, I got thinking about Bob earlier as well, and uh, Bob Wiley is 
we've talked about him in prayer, but he was a man of God. He's still with us, but doesn't look like he'll be here on this earth too much longer. And to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord, amen. So his time is coming that uh, he's been waiting for for a long time. And uh, so um, it'll be a sad day for us, but it'll be a great day for heaven's glory. And uh, one day we'll all be together soon. And so we're looking forward to that time, amen. But um, I guess if, you know, I'm going to read a few verses here. Uh, maybe I might have you turn uh, with me to a particular maybe story. But I guess if I had a title for this this morning, it would be, Do You Hear His Voice? Do You Hear His Voice? And uh, I just got a few verses here. Revelations 2.29 says, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I'll read that again to you. And it's the Lord speaking. He says, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. In Matthew 13, 15, Jesus speaking said, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. And in Matthew 13, 16, said, Jesus said, But blessed are your ears, for they see, your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Hallelujah. I, you know, and, and as I was looking at this and thinking about this, uh, I just have a few more scriptures here. And I, I really just want to, I'm praying that God would speak into our hearts today about hearing that second voice. Hearing his voice speak to us. You know, we hear so many things in this world today. There's so many voices speaking to us. There's so much going on around us. And I'm not saying that it's all bad. But sometimes I think it can get kind of clogged inside of our ear gates. Amen. And the things that we get hearing sometimes, some of it, if we're not careful, it's negative things. And it's things that, you know, whether you hear it from the news or maybe you hear it from school or maybe you hear it at work, especially if people, like Sister Sandy said, you know, I try my best. People say to me, you're always smiling. You're always happy. You know what? She gave that's the Lord that's doing that for you, right? Sister said, she has struggles. She has, she has things that's going on. She said, if people knew, but she gives it to God. She's trusted in the Lord for that. And yet, you know, there's people around us that aren't afraid. And I'm not saying that, you know, we all don't have a bad hair day. Because God knows I've had my bad hair days. Pastor Ron can tell you. My wife can tell you. Shannon can tell you. I have my had bad hair days. Thank God he remembers that we are but dust. I don't walk around with some cocaine smile and, you know, everything's just always perfect now. Praise the Lord. And, you know, nothing's wrong. Nothing's going to happen to me. I, I'm real. I believe that things, that Sister Sandy's saying, we go through the fire. We go through testing. We go through trials. But thank God that through it all, we know that he goes through it with us. And that he's there for us. And he's a friend that sticks closer than a, than a brother. And I was thinking about the things that people are listening to and the things that people are hearing and, you know, that is going, you know, like, I don't know about you, but, you know, it's kind of like your eyes are your ear gate. You know, sometimes the things you read is like you're hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I, I know this Pastor Ron would do this. I, mean, I, know, I know he doesn't because I just, I, I'm with him quite a bit. But he doesn't look and read the Detroit Free Press. I'm not saying it's bad to do that or the Detroit News or USA Today. But every once in a while, see him as we're in maybe at the gas station where we're working at, um, he'll just kind of look at the headlines and just kind of shake his head. You know, oh God, help this, help this world, help, right? And, and I'm not saying that we got to be ostriches and stick our heads in the ground, but at the same time, there's so much stuff. If you were to pick up that paper and read it, I'll guarantee you, and if you didn't spend any time in God's word, any time listening to the Holy Spirit and trying to get something spiritually in you, by the time you got done reading just Monday's paper, you would be so depressed. You would be like, man, this is bad. Because the paper never has hardly anything good to say. I'm not knocking the news. I'm not getting on that. You want good news? This is the good news. 
This is the good news that we can get into us every single day. But, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to, I don't know where I'm going. God help me in Jesus' name. Just, I want to, I want to just be led by his spirit today. Amen. Oh, I want him to have his way with me. But it's so important that we are careful, I really believe, in hearing God's voice. And, and listening to God's voice. You know, and there's a lot of scriptures I, I looked at. There were so many. And I wrote a few of them down. In Revelations 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice. And I started thinking about, are we hearing his voice today? Are, is, are we really in an age, it seems like we are in an age where really people aren't hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. They're hearing all kinds of other voices and they're being led into carnal thinking and stinking thinking and thinking about depressing thoughts and suicidal thoughts and negative thoughts. Men and women of God that once heard God and lived for God, the devil's coming along and lying to them and speaking to them and they're, they're being led astray, not even living for God any longer. How many, am I in the right house? Does someone, no, I mean, I mean, it's like I even see it in my own family where people are slowly being kept taken away by the lie of the enemy. And I thought, whose voice are they hearing? And what are they listening to? What am I listening to? If I don't spend time with God and in His Word, if I don't spend time, you know, even coming here, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. Amen? Yes. My faith gets increased by me hearing God's Word. By receiving God's Word. So I grow stronger in the Lord. If I never spent no time reading God's Word and studying God's Word, and I don't really mean studying, just looking at it. David said, you know, I, I meditated on the Lord. You know how many times in the scriptures of, of Psalms, David said, I meditate on His Word. What, what is he, I, I started thinking about, what is he doing? Medit he's he's, he's uh, eating up what he read. He's, he's thinking about what he read and what he heard God say to him. He's pondering it. Sometimes we hear a verse or we hear a scripture and we just throw it off like a bowl of cornflakes. Like, what, what was that? Man, that's God's word. When he says something into your heart, it's meant to go deep down inside of you. Because the Bible says that, we're, that word is a piercing sword. And it's dividing every soul and marrow and point, joint of the, of the bone and, and speaking and looking into our hearts. Into the deep things that God's looking at. Yeah. Man, Brother Chris, you're scaring me. No, I don't, you know, God doesn't want to scare us. There's nothing about us that God doesn't know about already. There's nothing that you haven't done, you haven't thought about. There's nothing that you're not going to do this week, next week, you haven't done this morning, that God doesn't already know about, sees it, been there, done that. And he loves you emphatically no matter what. He wants you to know that. He wants you to know the devil's wanting to beat you up and tell you you're no good, you're useless, you're, you're a waste of time, your life's going nowhere, get you feeling discouraged and depressed. The devil wants to do that. But God says, I love you. I care for you. I've got a plan for you. I've got a purpose for you. I've got, a, I've got something that you don't even know what I'm doing with you. You just spend time listening to me and drawing close to me. We spend all of our times in self-help books and self-this and self-that and psychiatry. I'm not saying that them don't help, but what happened to the Word of God? Getting the Word of God in you and letting it speak into your heart. You know, and as I was, you know, I, I don't want to sound so heavy, but I swear it's where I'm at right now. Maybe it'll get to go somewhere else here in a minute. I don't know. I'll be honest with you, there's an urgency in me. And I'm glad there is. I don't know, there's been a stirring in my spirit about the, the, the seemingly the, 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 this, this thing that's going on around us where people just seem to nonchalantly really don't even care about the things of God anymore. Do you, am, I, does, am I talking to anyone? It's like people that you once knew were on fire for the Lord and lived for God have, have slowly just kind of drifted away. They're not no longer where they once were. I'm not saying that you have to be some certain place or plateau. But, you know, the Bible says you'll know them by their fruits. Yeah. You'll see the things that produce out of their lives. 
And I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad because I need God every single day of my life and I need him to help me every single day because as I said a minute ago, I'm not perfect. I stumble and fall every single day. But I think that if you're not careful, if you're not careful that you can slowly start getting to a place where you're really not hearing his voice anymore. And that, you know, the things of the world and the enemy will come in and start lying to you and deceiving you and start telling you false things. And, you know, and you, it's a battle. you got to work at it every day. It's a battle. you got to get up and read your Bible. Sometimes, I'm not saying it's, it's not by works. Well, Brother Chris, thought you said it's not. It's not by works. But at least any of us should boast. But, you know, if you show me your works by, and by faith, I'll say that man is living for God. Or that man's trying because your works is going to demonstrate your love for God. But you've got to spend some time in it. You know, you've got to spend, you got to make the time. It isn't just something that just comes easy. You've got to spend time with God. I had something happen to me a few weeks ago. It's kind of funny because there's been a few things that's been happening to me lately. And Pastor Ron shared a few weeks ago when he walked into the door, there were leaves, remember? And uh, through that, the Lord gave him a message about the leaves. Remember that? And I shared a few weeks ago about a, another story that had happened to me, and I ended up using that. Well, I had been in a position like in the last, what was it about? It's been about three weeks now. But for about a month and a half, I was slowly noticing that my right ear, I wasn't hearing out of it as good. I wasn't, I didn't have no pain. I didn't have no, like people around me were all coughing and congestion. And my wife said, well, maybe you got a little bit of sinus. I said, yeah, but I don't feel any. I don't feel no pressure. I don't feel anything. And, you know, and so it, it, it was getting worse. And like, it just kept, you know, where it was like, more and more noticeable, I'd, I'd be at home and she'd say, did you hear what I said? And I, I'd have to turn and I'd say, what? And, or I'd be with Pastor Ron and he'd say, I, he'd look at me like, I've said it to you three times so far, what's going on? You know, I'd say, what, huh, huh? I kept huh, huh? What, what? You know, so, and I, and I listened to headphones, I got headphones on when we're, when we're doing lawns and you know, then, and, and uh, I got the music off, you know, and then my wife said, well, maybe you're, you're getting hard of hearing. <laughs> you know, maybe I am. I don't know. Just turned the big six hole. And, uh, you know, I'm up here with these monitors, like, like really close to me, blasting away. Been around here 30-something years up here hearing that. Well, maybe I am, you know. Talk, went out with Sister Gloria after... Sunday, that last Sunday before I found out what was going on, and she was talking to me about my hearing, and half the time she was talking to me, I couldn't hear her, because she was sitting on my right side. I'm like, Shazam, man, this is not good. You know, I kept doing this thing, you know, excuse me. You know, you know how you do, right? I'm trying to, like, clear the ear, you know? And now, I'm like, now there's a concern, you know? So at first I'm like, it's going to go away, doing this, you know? So the woman says, well, you know, we got some eardrops. Why don't we try some eardrops? You know, I'm like, yeah, why don't we try that? So I, we go, and I lay my head down, and she gets some eardrops, and she puts them in my ear. <clears throat> and it made it worse. It, like, totally, I, like, I went deaf in this ear. Like, I was sitting at home, and I put my hand over my left ear, and I couldn't even hear the TV. I couldn't hear nothing in the house. Now I'm getting a little concerned. You know, and sometimes we can put the wrong thing inside of us to try to fix the problem when really the only real solution is Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, but sometimes we'll try to put other things inside of us to fix what's going on when really, really we just need to go to Jesus. Amen. Well, this is a physical thing, but I really believe that God used it to speak into my heart about a spiritual thing in my own life. And maybe to others as well, because I really believe a lot of times what God says to me, he says to all of us, especially if I'm sharing the word. Amen. So take it however you want. But this is where I'm at today. And so I, you know, I, that's why I named this. Are you hearing his voice? Because I was having a hard time hearing. I'd, be, I, I'd ask Linda, I said, maybe we ought to put on the caption on the TV where I can read the words. <laughs> I, seriously, I'm, I even got out one of my boombox uh, 
speakers and hooked it up to the TV and I'd have a full blast. She's like looking at me like, you think you got it loud enough? <laughs> Nicole would be looking at us like, what's going on? Finally that Monday morning, she's like, you know what, maybe you need to go to the doctors. You know, we don't, us guys are especially bad about going to the doctors. The, the, the big D word, right? <laughs> It's like, Jesus, maybe just go to, oh, oh, that's how we are sometimes. The doctors, oh, first of all, you know, copay, blah, 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 trying to figure out ways to get out of it. Well, my doctor won't let me in anyway because she's really hard to see, and I'll probably have to make an appointment and be two weeks. So I'm driving around, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've got my hand on my ear, trying to see if it's getting any better, and I can't hear nothing. I got the radio full blast in my car, I'm like, this is not good. I heard the Lord say, yeah, this is not good. <laughs> I'm praying, but nothing's going away. So I called, and she's like, you know what? She had a cancellation. We can get you in at noon today. <laughs> I said, okay. Go home, tell the wife, I'm going to the doctor. She said, good. <laughs> Wife's up. They're always happy when we do something that they feel that we should be doing. Amen. Come on. <laughs> or those around us that love us. So I go to the doctors, and I'm thinking, like, you know, you're always thinking the worst, right? I'm thinking all kinds of stuff, right? I get in there, and the nurse looks at my ear and goes, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I said, what was that? He said, man, he goes, you've got a lot of wax in there. I said, really? He goes, yeah. I goes, I goes well, I, I cleaned my ears. He said, no. So the doctor comes in, and she does the same. She goes, ooh. <laughs> oh. I said, what can you do about it? She goes, well, we'll see. Uh, she said, well, probably going to have to give you this solution. And you go home for four days. And you put it in your ear every day. She said, and then it'll warm it up and kind of melt it. And then you're going to come back in here and we're going to try to get it out. She said, but we're going to try today and just see if we can get it out the way we're going to try to get it out in a couple more days. I said, is it going to hurt? She goes, no, it's not going to hurt. Gonna, I'm like, oh, that's my ear, right? So in comes, I'm thinking the doctor's going to do it. Then comes this nurse going to do it. And I'm like, have you done this before? You know how you get, like, you sure you know what you're doing? You know, they got this, like, look like, a, <laughs> look like an old-fashioned uh, oil can, you know. <laughs> and he takes this little basin of water, and he goes over to the sink, and he fills it up with water. And he really doesn't explain to me what he's going to do until he starts getting ready to do it. He said, all right, just keep your head up. He puts his pad on my shoulder. He said, keep your head up. He said, I'm going to just squirt this into your ear. And I said, squirt what into my ear? He said, I'm going to squirt this water. It's just water. It's warm water. I'm going to squirt this water into your ear. So, I mean, I, I, I you know, it had to been at least 12, 15 ounces of that in that can. You know, and, I'm always hearing, don't get no water in your ear. You're going to get an infected. You're going to, you know, you're going to get swimmers here. Don't get water in your ear. Trust me, you can get water in your ear and you'll be all right. <laughs> so he takes that thing and he's got like, it just looks like a little old-fashioned oil can. He just, and as he squeezes, I can kind of see out of the corner of my eye, I'm looking at him. He's squeezing it. It's, and I, it's going in my ear. And as it's going in my ear, all of a sudden, it's like this sound that I'd never heard before in my ear. And it's going Whoosh. It was like, wow, that was cool. <laughs> and it was also scary at the same time. Because I'm, you know, Pastor Ron made a joke about it. He goes, did the water come out the other side? <laughs> uh, three Stooges thing. I said, no, it didn't come out the other side. I goes, but I don't know where it went. <laughs> and I held my head sideways and a little bit drained out. And he goes, I goes, well, 